hello to all returning and new subscribers. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, I encourage you to do so, so you don't miss any of the new videos. This time, I set off in the middle of the night to reach my destination around dawn. My nearly three-hour motorcycle journey was driven by the desire to see one of the most picturesque and therefore most photographed villages in England. I want you to join me on a journey through the Cotswolds and Biberry. The name Biberry originates from the Old English word Beeg, meaning a river with bends. The village lies along the river Colne, perfectly matching its name. The first mentions of Biberry date back to the 11th century, making it one of the oldest settlements in the Cotswolds. Biberi has roots dating back to Roman times, as evidenced by archaeological finds in the area. In the Middle Ages, the village was a center of the wool industry, particularly in weaving. The famous cottages at Arlington Row were originally used by weavers working in the mill. Arlington Row is not only rich in history, but also has strong TIs to the present. House number one was used as the residence for the character Matthew Crawley in the popular TV series Downton Abbey. Meanwhile, the famous Christmas scene from the film Bridget Jones, The Edge of Reason, was filmed at house number seven.
Arlington Row is such an important symbol of British culture that its image is featured on the inside pages of British passports. This distinction highlights its significance as a national icon. These passports are carried by millions of Britons, making Arlington Row known worldwide. However, Bibbury is not just about Arlington Row. Allow me to show you a few other places worth visiting. First, let's walk up through the village to admire the unique architecture of the picturesque countryside cottages, all while making sure to keep up our physical fitness along the way. The architecture of the cottages in Bibbury is the epitome of the English countryside style, featuring distinctive low doors and small windows. These buildings often have picturesque gardens that enhance their charm and authenticity. Their design and construction were closely tied to local craftsmen who utilized materials available in the area.
we are approaching St. Mary's Church. It was built in the 12th century as a Norman church, which is evident in its distinctive architecture. The first mention of the church dates back to 1130, with its tower added in the 13th century. The church has been expanded and modernized several times over the centuries, including in the 19th century. The interior of St. Mary's Church is adorned with beautiful Gothic arches and architectural details. It also features colorful stained glass windows that add a mystical atmosphere to the space. Particularly noteworthy is the stained glass depicting St. George, dating back to the 15th century. The organ, dating from the 19th century, is a valuable part of the historic furnishings. It is used not only during liturgy, but also as a concert instrument, attracting music enthusiasts. Its stylish design and sound are an integral part of the unique character of this place.
let's return to the area around Arlington Row. The River Colne, once a vital source of power for water mills in Bibbury, now plays a crucial role in shaping the village's landscape, influencing the placement of historical buildings along its banks. A walk along it is undoubtedly a tourist attraction, offering amazing and unforgettable experiences. If you get hungry or need a bit of rest, you can stop at one of the hotels, pubs, or restaurants to relax and enjoy the beauty of the area, even from outside. Heading up the B for 425 Road to the southwest, we encounter more buildings characteristic of Cotswolds architecture. We can also recharge with a cup of coffee and satisfy our taste buds with fresh bread. Continuing further up, 
we'll come across even more architectural masterpieces. We turned left to follow Hawker's Hill, a street once inhabited by traders and craftsmen, which gave it its name. These houses, witnesses to the development of local crafts, have simple yet elegant designs typical of Cotswold's architecture. In spring and summer, the street is surrounded by lush greenery and blooming gardens, adding to its charm. Our journey through this charming village is slowly coming to an end. Thank you for joining me on this walk, and I encourage you to subscribe to my channel to help it grow. I also appreciate your support for a cup of coffee. Details are in the description. As always, I invite you to stay until the end to view a few photos, this time also in a moving version. See you soon.